Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining our online stream, and happy Mother's Day. To all the moms out there, we hope that you're enjoying your day and that someone in your life is showing you just how important and valuable you are. And hopefully you're getting spoiled a little bit too. Today is our Mother's Day theme service, and we want to take the next little while to highlight mothers and encourage them. On today's stream, Shelby Roll will be speaking about motherhood, and we pray that all the moms who are out there watching will lead built up and strengthened in your resolve to be the mother that God has called you to be. Mike Snow and Donna Stacy will be leading us in worship, so wherever you are, we encourage you to worship. He deserves all the praise and worship that we can give him. Psalm 115 and 1 says this, We don't deserve praise. The Lord alone deserves all of the praise because of his love and faithfulness. So just before we worship together, we want to show you a Mother's Day video that we put together a couple years ago. Happy Mother's Day, everyone, and enjoy. Okay, so sit nice and still. There you go. And look at Pastor C and me. <laughs> so you guys know that this Sunday is Mother's Day, right? Yes. yes. So I'm going to ask you... And then it's going to be Father's Day. And then it's going to be Father's Day. You're right. So I'm going to ask you some questions about your mom, okay? You tell us about your mom. And we didn't know what to give our dad. Didn't you? A, well, you got, a big barbecue. A big barbecue. Well, you got lots of time to think about because Father's Day is not yes. June, right? I know. I'm going to buy it for... for... Uh, Daddy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions about Matt now, okay? Ready? I know what I'm going to give Dad. A jackhammer. A jackhammer? I'm going to give Daddy a radio. Yeah, so but we all we, got it. We got a song radio. Oh, really? <laughs> it works. So, we already have one. Do you have? <laughs> you roll the thing like this. Yeah. And then the song turns on. Seriously? So we're going to ask you some questions about your mom. We're going to let it be a surprise for us. A couple video. questions? Yeah, a couple questions. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I got uh, flowers. <gasps> <laughs> uh, oh, it's been constant. Oh, mommy something. Oh, mom something. Okay. <laughs> Probably cook dinner. Mm. Well, I kind of think the same. Yeah, she makes a good one. Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Pizza. What's your favorite meal? Bisagna. <laughs> Mommy don't cook bisagna any days. No. He only cooks. He don't cook bisagna more days, but he cooks pizza for more days. I see. Uh, Shake and bake. What? Shake and bake. Shake and bake? That sounds awesome. Um, probably macaroni and cheese. <laughs> probably the same. <laughs> Broccoli. <laughs> Yucky bisagna. <laughs> <laughs> Yucky vision. Uh, play, play outside. Play outside? For you guys? Yes. <laughs> goes to work. She goes to work for fun? What, when I go to Shirley's. Mm, she probably maybe does yoga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I'm probably going on vacation because she's really um, uh, like happy and when she's on vacation, <laughs> like usually. <laughs> yeah, I knew the same. Uh, planting seeds and caring for mommy. And I gotta give a second dog with the dog shakes. And when it shakes, you gotta go back to the beginning. Yeah. And start again. And you love playing that with your mom. Yeah. Yeah. And my dad. And your dad. Cool. Awesome. Well, when I went to Florida, when like a long time ago. Yeah, you had fun in Florida, with mom. Yeah. What'd you do in Florida? Um. What made Florida so fun? Building the sandcastles. We went to Florida two times, actually. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. And you built sandcastles both times. No. Just once. 
Пока. А um, chocolate heart. <laughs> I'd probably give her like some jewelry if she likes that and like some really cool clothes. Yeah. Microphone. A microphone. A check hammer. A check hammer. <laughs> A chairs. <laughs> chairs. Chairs. And we're at a new couch. At a new couch. Yes, we're at a new couch. Wait. Do you think she want it? What do you think she would want? Roses. Roses. You buy a million roses? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where would you put them all? Well, she do have a lot of roses. I oh, know enough of that. Yeah. I've got a McDonald's card that I can buy something with it. <laughs> a credit card. A credit card from McDonald's. Oh, you do just buy her a credit card, would you? No, Walmart. Walmart. You would buy her a Walmart credit card? If I had a million dollars, I would give mommy a Walmart gift card. Would you? She's beautiful. Yes. She plays with you? Yes. yes. And yeah. toys? She gives you toys? Yes. <laughs> well, we have enough toys now, Judah. Yeah? No, I got the book. Because they get some money for me. <laughs> oh, because she's so kind to me. Oh. I love everything about my mom. She's just the best mom in the world. You can never go wrong when she's around. She's really, really nice. Like, she's the best mom in the whole entire world. Galaxy, anything. The same. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our online service, and I would like to just take this moment today to wish every mom out there a happy Mother's Day. So just sit back, relax, and just enjoy the presence of God with us today as we worship together.
to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you Lord you give life you give life you are
surrounding me Let it break At your name still Call the steam to still The rage in me to still Every way At your name Oh Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe. Call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing. Today is a day of honor for moms. For every mother in every stage of life, today is a day of honor. We honor moms of infants and little ones. May God bless you with patience, kindness, and perseverance. And may you believe that your never-ending job will help bring true life to the generations that follow. We honor moms of teenagers. May God give you grace upon grace, and may you travel this uncertain journey together with them, 
as they transition from child to adult. We honor women who are trying to have children, but who are not yet able. It took courage and resolve to come to church today. May God gently remind you that He has not forgotten you. And may you become newly inspired to keep your eyes fixed on the light of His gaze. We honor grandmothers today. May God give you the grace to see the good that you provided to your own children. And may you help inspire your grandkids to follow Jesus with every step they take. And finally, we honor moms who have lost children prematurely. May God be your strength and comfort on a day like today. And may you rise stronger than ever to be a blessing to others. For those we mentioned, and for the many unidentified moms that we didn't, God has always used a mother's love and strength to make known His own love and strength. In your best moments, and in your imperfections, the glory of God is shining through you. Happy Mother's Day. Good evening, church, and happy Mother's Day to all you moms, grandmas, honorary moms, stepmoms, foster moms, and to all you who played mom roles in different people's lives. First of all, I want to put out the disclaimer before I share with you. I am far from a perfect mom, and I'm not even a well-experienced one. It was just over two years ago that I became a mom to a sweet little girl, and now we are expecting our second baby, a little boy at the end of August. My journey of motherhood and what it has looked like so far is nothing close to a perfect Instagram family or even a sappier memorable Facebook post. Generally, if you see my child running around and she is running, I hope that she is clothed because often she's not fully. And she's usually sporting her favorite uh, stain of food that she had that day, marker she was playing with, paired with a couple cuts and bruises and this and that. Really could be anything. And that's just her. Our house is what we like to call well lived in, which just means that it's a mess. And there's lots of unfolded laundry. And I can't care that much about it. And as for myself, I do not typically look like this, not just because of a pandemic or anything like that, but it's just because taking the time to get ready usually means a disaster in my house or someone going to the ER or something flooding. And you know what? That's just what being a mom has been in my life so far. <laughs> it's been messy. It's been imperfect. But I just want to take a couple minutes to share with you about some of the truths God revealed to me when I first became a mom that have become so relevant every day since. My journey to motherhood was not boring. And when I became a mom, it was no exception. <laughs> Throughout my labor, I did a lot of thinking. And that's what you do when you stay up for five days straight, timing contractions and weathering the storm and waiting for that precious baby to come. I wanted to remember what I felt and what I was thinking, and more importantly, how on earth I was gonna get through this and live to tell the tale. There was no book, there was no story, there was no experience, there was no advice anyone shared with me that helped me in those moments. I was completely bewildered and lost for help. And even though my husband was there and he was kind and caring, there wasn't really anything he could do. There wasn't anything really I could do. And I was so lost and I almost felt lonely in that moment. But then one night, it was the first night, there were many nights to follow this in the waiting. God reminded me of some of the scriptures I had read leading up to this. And he reminded me that he created me to do just this, that this was actually a natural part. And that, you know what, even though I was feeling so lost and so out of control. He was in control. So in that moment, I just took a deep breath 
And it was a moment of peace. God had this. I just had to lean and depend on Him in every single moment, in every single breath, and every single anxious thought until I got that baby girl. And I just said, you know what? Jesus, you take the wheel. You can do this, you'll get me through. And He did. And it was full of peace and beautiful moments. What I didn't know in that time was that I was looking at the short game to just getting that baby girl. But God was looking at the long game and he was preparing me for exactly what I needed to be a good mom. Someone told me I had everything I needed already inside of me to be a good mom when I was pregnant. And I was like, you have no idea what you're talking about. And she said, don't listen to all that wonderful unsolicited advice that you get. I was like, but I need it. I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm trying not to freak out because my husband is probably more freaked out than I am because he hasn't even changed a diaper before. But what she was talking about, I realized quickly, wasn't the experience that I had going into it. See, we're not supposed to know. You know, you're not supposed to know how to parent. The most natural part about all of it is probably the giving birth part. People do that in their cars. God made you for that. That comes naturally. But the parenting part every day after is what we're not supposed to know so that we depend on God. And that's just what she meant. She didn't mean that I had read everything, which I had, and that I had listened to everything everyone told me because I took notes. It was just that I had my faith. I had God in me. I had eternal purpose and that I could solely depend on him in every moment. I wake up most days and I'm completely uncertain about what to do with my daughter and what we're gonna face and how to help her grow and how to help her learn that she's God's. And you know what, he reminds me that I don't have to follow the plans on Pinterest and I don't have to do what everyone else is doing and posting, which we see a lot during this pandemic. See that comparison, that kills the joy of being a mom. But depending on God is not disappointing. He leads you in that perfect path of how to be a good mom how to be compassionate, how to love your kids. Because the thing is, is that the pressure of being a mom and raising a godly child is huge some days. And I'm like, I should know how to do this because I'm her mom and I held her for nine months inside of me and I even got the head start. I should know. And I love Jesus, so I should know. But Psalm 139, 13, says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And it was then that I realized that she wasn't really mine. He created her in me. He used me and I was a vessel for his purpose, for her life. And so every day to be a good mom, I had to depend on him. I have to continuously give her back to him because sometimes it's easier to follow the plan that someone else set out for you because depending on God means we need the new mercy every day. We need to spend time and listen to him every single day. And being a mom, that's really hard to do because there's not a lot of time you get to yourself, no matter what stage you're in. And there's not a whole lot of quiet and there's not a whole lot of peace. (laughs) But it's just that depending on God is perfect. He never lets you down. He always has the right direction. And guess what? He knows your kid better than you do. And so it's just, it was just that. It was something so simple that I knew I had to do. It was just to depend on God every day like I had no idea, which was easy to do because I still have no idea. <laughs> but every day I can get up and I can rely on Him. And it even says in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Moms, you don't have to rely on your own understanding or anyone else's. You just have to rely on his and the path of being a mom and being a parent. And no matter where you are in that season, he will keep you straight on the path. He will keep your life and your family growing for that eternal purpose. That dependency on him has got me through the highs and lows already. (laughs) And it's one that has grown. And you know what? His perfect provision is what makes me a good mom. It's not in what I know, but it's in who I turn to. 
And, you know, even those were the days leading up to when, when they finally placed that perfect little girl in my arms. The love that everyone tells you that you experience, that's huge. It was bigger than what I even thought. I was overwhelmed and it was so perfect. And in that moment, God spoke to me and he said, if you can love her so much on this earth, how much more do I love you? And this was the second thing that God revealed to me when I became a mom that I hold tight to every day. The love that we have is the love that drives every sacrifice you make as a mom of your possessions, of your time, of your sleep, of many, many years and so many things. Right now, a big thing is my food. I have to share it. It's not that fun. (laughs) But because I love my kid and I want what's best for her, I do it. And you know, when they're tired, we hold them. When they're hungry, we feed them. And no matter what it is that they need, we're there and we want to provide it. Mom, the sacrifices we pay are huge. And the burdens we carry are bigger than they should be. And sometimes it's so physically exhausting or mentally exhausting or even spiritually exhausting when you just can't seem to get that time with God. I just want to encourage you (laughs) that how you feel about your kids, God loves you that much and more. So when you're tired, he wants to give you a place of rest. When you're hungry, he wants to feed your body and your soul. God looks after every single care of you being a mom, even when it seems like you can't even take a sick day because being a mom is a 24 seven job. But God looks after you. The love he has for you is so huge. He sees you in every single moment, every lonely night feeding that you experienced, any time in which they were gone with friends or you just didn't know what to do, or you're waiting for the call after they moved out, wondering when they check in again, and you're just lonely. God sees you in those moments and he's fully present and fully there to fill you up. My daughter reminded me of this just a little while ago when I was putting her to sleep and I was praying, praying that she would go to sleep. (laughs) It was late and she just wouldn't give in and she was quiet. So I thought maybe, thought maybe I got it. But no, I hear her whisper underneath her blankies. And she says, I best, I got girl. She said, mommy blessed, mommy God's girl. And you know what? She took me right back and she filled me for what my tired body and soul needed at that time. I was reminded to the time she was first placed in my arms and the love I had for her. I was reminded of God's love that he has for us and that mom, there's someone taking care of you. You are God's child. You're free from all the comparison. You're free from all the burdens that you carry. No matter what hat you have on in a day and the task that you fill your time with, God wants to take care of you and he's there for you to walk you through every single stage of being a mom. God's love and purpose for you in being a mom was not just to do all the mundane tasks. Realistically, your kids won't remember how clean your house is, how late you stayed up every Christmas wrapping gifts for them, They won't remember all the chores. They might not even remember all the lectures. They certainly don't know all the worries and things that you carry. But what they will remember is what you can pass to them. What example that you lead for their lives. So moms on this Mother's Day, I pray that you are free from the pressures and all the comparisons of the how-to books, the plans, the social media, mom, the instructions, the expectations, I pray you become solely dependent on God and you find your true identity in Him as His child. I pray that you let Him fill you up. You have a glimpse of that mother's heart every single day for your children. And I pray that that would just feed into your relationship with God as He loves you that much more. Go to Him. Take a moment today if you haven't already and find that rest. Let Him speak that truth into you and who you are and the well that you draw from. But moms, the best thing you can do for your kids is go to God and 
be the woman that he created you to be. Now, please, if you would join with Rhonda Earl as she prays for our mothers and families. Thank you, Shelby. Wherever you are today, let's bow in prayer together. Father, I just wanna take a moment to thank you for your faithfulness and for your love. And for families, oh God, we know that families are your very heartbeat. And we just pray over each mom, each dad, each, each person that's watching this live feed today, we just pray that your blessing will be upon each one of us. In our homes, oh God, we just pray for each mom as she cares for her children. Whether she be a single mom, or a young mom, or even a grandmother who's missing her grandchildren these days, we just pray that your peace will be upon each one of us. You will just surround each one of us with your love. May we be reminded each day that even though we may not understand the times around us, you've promised us, O oh God, in your word that you will be with us through these challenging times. You promise to be our guide, our strength, and our comfort. And O oh God, while the days may seem long, we pray that you will just continue, O oh God, to remind each one of us that you are with us and we will get through this together with your strength. We just pray, O oh God, that each, each one that's listening to this broadcast, O oh God, will just be reminded today that you can be our strength. You are our strength and you prom your promises never fail. And that you promise to just be faithful and to be our strength at this time. We just pray your continued blessings upon us today and through the coming days and weeks. We ask these things today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul on me God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so
Thank you, Shelby and Mike and Donna for helping us out today. And we want to thank all of you for joining us. Even though we can't be together in person, these online experiences have really been great times for us to connect as a church because we are still the church. The church is not defined by the building. The church is not its pews. The church is not its pulpit. The Bible says that we are the church. That's you and me. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27 says this, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Nothing can stop us from being the church. So if you're watching today, and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, you can do that. And if you've done that during this broadcast, then please let us know. Or if you want to talk or have someone pray with you, then by all means, connect with us. Again, thanks for watching, everyone. We love and miss you all. And happy Mother's Day. And we hope that you've had a great one. Take care.